Hi students, now we are going to summarize whatever we have studied in photoelectric effect under the heading Laws of Photoelectric Effect. So these five points in any sequence you can write. These are called the Laws of Photoelectric Emission. The first one is for a given frequency of the incident light which is greater than the threshold frequency the photo current or the photoelectric current is directly proportional to the intensity of the incident light. We have already proved it graphically. Okay. So the intensity of light is uh, nothing but the number of photons incident per unit area per second. And the current is nothing but the number of photo electrons emitted per unit area per second. Both will be equal. Therefore, the saturation current also must be proportional to the intensity of light. Is it not? When I say current is proportional to intensity, it includes what saturation current also is proportional to the intensity of light. Okay, students. So the second one, the kinetic energy maximum. That is the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. That is independent of the intensity of light. I told you. Even if the source of light is kept very close to the metal surface, what will happen? Bright light will fall on the metal. Brightness is proportional to what? Intensity. Intensity is again proportional to what? Number of photons incident on the metal per unit area per second. But if the energy is not sufficient, means it cannot initiate the photoelectric emission. I told you, no. So, the kinetic energy or the maximum kinetic energy is independent of the intensity of the light. When I say the kinetic energy is independent, you must also remember the stopping potential also is independent of the intensity of light. Because kinetic energy maximum and stopping potential are directly proportional to each other. Third one, the maximum kinetic energy and also the stopping potential. They are proportional to what the frequency of the incident light. This is what I told you. When the incident frequency is high means naturally the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons will be high and the work done to stop them or the stopping potential also will be high. That is the third law. The fourth one is for any given photoelectric surface such as the cesium, iron, platinum, tungsten, like that for every metal surface okay there is a certain minimum frequency of the incident light below which the photoelectric effect does not take place so for a given material there is a minimum frequency of light below which photoelectrons are not emitted and that is denoted by the symbol nu naught what is the name given to nu naught yes threshold frequency However high the intensity is, is it not? Even if the intensity is very high also, if the frequency is less than this threshold frequency means no emission of electrons will take place. And lastly, the fifth one is photoelectric effect is instantaneous. The moment light photons will be incident on the metal, there will be interaction between the photon incident on the metal and the electron of the metal so that immediately emission of the electrons will begin. That is why the straight line graph which we have drawn between the intensity and the electric current is a straight line passing through the origin. If at all you say that what is the time lag means there is no time lag actually. Within how much uh, seconds the emission starts is 1 nanosecond that is 10 power minus 9 second. So all of you must have understood these points. Uh. So today we have studied photoelectric effect, uh, Einstein's photoelectric uh, equation, the variation of photoelectric current with the intensity of the incident light, the variation of photoelectric current with the applied uh, potential difference, uh, the variation or the dependence of the stopping potential on the frequency of the incident light and we have summarized the loss of photoelectric effect. So we will meet you in the next topic. See you until then. Bye.